Hey, what's up? It's Triggy. I've been working on this project for months, and I really think I'm onto something. But in order to explain it, I need to start at the beginning. Last December, I was home for the holidays, and I got to see my grandma. My grandma suffers from a tremor, and it's starting to interfere with daily tasks. And if I want to scratch my head, mm -hmm. my hand won't work in a certain direction. It goes in another direction. Ah. Writing is hellish, swiggly, terribly swiggly. The squiggle comes some letters and not others so much. I don't know. You see why I've got a typewriter. I didn't know much about tremors, and I thought they were just random movements. But at dinner one night, as my grandma is graciously reenacting, I noticed something that changed everything. The motion of the tremor is periodic. Periodic meaning it repeats itself. Now, that might not sound like much, but in the world of engineering, that's huge. And here's why. There are three facts about periodic motion that combine to make magic. Fact 1. Repeating patterns can be broken down into a sum of simple sine waves. Let's take this curve here. It's a chaotic looking curve, but the pattern repeats itself. Using something called a Fourier transform, we can decompose this curve into a sum of these sine waves. The sine waves are all different from each other insofar as they have different frequencies and amplitudes, but they're all just sine waves. Fact 2. Often just a couple of these sine waves account for most of the pattern, the rest are just small details. Here we see the first wave roughly approximating the original pattern, and the addition of a second wave already makes it way better. After three waves, we've basically got it. In fact, three, there are branches of engineering specifically dedicated to filtering out sine waves. Those three facts together mean if my grandma's tremor is in fact periodic, and if that periodic pattern is dominated by just a couple of frequencies, maybe we can do something. So 183644 is on there. Okay. Now, my grandma's not really a mathy person, but she was super gung-ho about the idea, so we didn't let ourselves get caught up in the theory and jumped right into testing. Straight out in front. Yeah, perfect. Let's do just like that for 10 seconds. On her hand is a glove to track acceleration in three axes. This is connected to an Arduino, which is connected to my computer, and that lets us capture movement data from the tremor. And guys, the results are in. Not only is the movement totally periodic, but it's dominated by the same single frequency in all three axes, here at just under 5 Hz. That means if I can make a device that filters out that 5 Hz sine wave, that could potentially be super helpful. Okay, so there's a lot of approaches to take here, but I think the most promising is also the most simple. In areas with lots of earthquakes, engineers will use systems called tuned mass dampers to limit the amount of shaking that buildings and bridges experience. At its core, a tuned mass damper system is just a mass on a spring or a pendulum. If you pick the right size for the mass on the spring so that the mass oscillates at the same frequency as the building, the kinetic energy moving the building gets transferred to the mass, which then gets dissipated, keeping the building still. With that, I'm going to jump into a proof of concept. I'm going to try and relatively quickly develop something that can limit oscillations in just one axis of motion. That way I'll know if I'm onto something. This box contains 110 gram mass with a net spring constant of 100 newtons per meter. If we check the measurements, we see this results in an oscillatory frequency of just under 5 Hz. That means shaking this box at 5 Hz should result in very little motion in my arm, but a lot of motion of the mass. As I speed up the frequency, I'm giving just about the same amount of effort, but the displacement of my arm is less and less. Yeah, it feels just like I'm using a shake weight or something. But me shaking this box doesn't prove anything. We need to test it. So, we sat down to take some data. Yeah, good. Perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't either. Luckily, this test is looking really promising. And if we take a look at the data, it becomes really obvious. Both tests without the device have a 5 Hz peak, and in the test with the device, it's completely nerfed. The maximum amplitude dropped by over 80%. That was really exciting to see, and that confirmed for me this proof of concept. But remember, that only worked in one dimension, and humans move through 3D space. Also, the tremor is not constant. It varies based on all sorts of factors. If you're tired or wound up about something, if I was in an airport, I'd be all over the shop. Mm. That's why this device needs to be as robust as possible. So it's time to move on to the next iteration and find a way to get this device to work consistently over all axes. However, one hurdle has presented itself that is going to really interfere with testing any more devices. And that's that I was only home for a couple of weeks and I live on another continent. The only way through this that I see is to simulate an arm tremor. That would mean building a replica arm, motorizing it to oscillate at the same frequency as the tremor, and I guess rigging the arm with some sort of spring system so that it also oscillates with the same frequency as the motor. That would just be an incredible amount of work and I don't know. It's done. I did it. The arm is PVC pipe while the hand is a rubber glove that I filled with silicone rubber. The arm can pivot in two axes on this collar. Over here you see the wrist is supported by springs, which means if the hand is displaced, it'll oscillate back and forth in both axes. 
The hand is wearing the same glove from before, so we can measure and compare the oscillations. In the back, a motor is connected to a disc, which is connected to the arm with a spring. As the disc rotates, it enacts just a small force on the arm, but here's the thing. The system is tuned so that the springs oscillate at the same frequency as the motor, so the small forces add up. This is the same principle as when you push someone on a swing. If you push with a small force, but at random intervals, of course nothing will happen. But if you push with a small force at the same rate that the person is swinging, the person will accumulate momentum. But that's all theory. Let's try it out. I've got the accelerometer connected to my computer, so let's run it. The motion looks good, and the data confirms it. We have a 5 Hz tremor simulator. Let's go ahead and confirm the test from the previous device. First I'll run the simulation without anything, and now I'll run the simulation with the device. If we check out the data, the oscillations in the x-axis are reduced just like before, so everything looks good. Now we can start thinking about the second iteration. Now my first idea was just to make three of these devices, one for each axis of motion. But while that might work, this box is already too bulky by itself, and three of them would just be outrageous. While researching this topic, I ran into a design that's supposed to prevent rotations, which is not what we're working on, but it did give me an idea. I'm going to make a bracelet with an external mass, and springs that allow it to oscillate in the x and z axes. I have no idea if this will work, but I've printed out a frame and put some springs on it just to play around and get some intuition for if it might work. It's definitely oscillating, so I'll add masses to give it a frequency of 5 Hz, and we can confirm that frequency with the accelerometer. Unfortunately, I can't do any live testing until I'm back home in Thanksgiving, but that's why we made the simulator. Okay, optically, that looked really promising. There was a lot of motion of the mass, and it looked like there was a reduction in movement in the arm, but we'll have to take a look at the data. Here's the oscillation of both axes without the bracelet, and here's the oscillation of both axes with the bracelet. We see the same radical reduction in oscillation that we saw before, but this time it's in both axes. These test results are fantastic, I'm really excited about this. After months of work, I have solid evidence that this is a device that could significantly reduce tremor. I'm not stopping there. This device looks really good for linear motion, but we can't forget about rotation. So I'm going to continue work on a part 2 that tackles the rotation aspect of the tremor. After that, I can optimize the system for real world use, and hopefully I'll have a complete design to test live with my grandma when I'm home for Thanksgiving. That's the plan, anyway. Please subscribe for updates, and please like the video if you liked the video. Until next time.